A group of physicists say they have proved that true randomness exists. Not just randomness as in rolling dice or shuffling cards that you can't predict because you lack information, but randomness that's entirely, fundamentally unpredictable. Indeed, the press release claims that scientists have proved that Einstein was wrong when he said that God does not play dice. Little Albert is very confused. Just what did they do? Let's have a look. Before we get to the science news, I have a special offer that you might find useful. It's for The Economist, one of the few remaining sources of high quality journalism. At The Economist, you find journalism for people who want facts and can think for themselves. They report on global affairs, economics, politics, but also developments in technology and science. I find their reporting generally balanced and well researched. It's great for staying up to date, for example, on how artificial intelligence is changing the world. They recently had a very interesting article on how much China is investing into AI. It's amazing, especially when it comes to embodied AI, that is, intelligent robots. They are so far ahead. I think we're super underestimating what's to come. I'm somewhat old-fashioned and like reading the print version, but they do of course have an online version. And if you like to get your news on the go, they also have an app where you can listen to audio versions of the articles and the full weekly edition along with podcasts and short videos. And the special offer today is that you can get 35% off your subscription. All you need to do is use my link economist.com slash Zabina. And now back to the science news. Proving true randomness would be a big deal, both because of its fundamental, indeed existential relevance, as well as its practical use. On the fundamental side, it would demonstrate that the past really doesn't determine the present. It would mean that the block universe is wrong, that the future is open, and your fate wasn't fixed by the Big Bang. On the practical side, true randomness can be used for encryption protocols that are safe safer than any pseudo-random numbers, because anything that isn't truly random brings the risk that someone discovers regularities in it. Randomness can also somewhat counterintuitively be used to make some computations more efficient. I talked about this in a previous video. Okay, so this is why the question matters. Now, what have they actually done? This work comes from a group at NIST, that's the US American National Institute for Standards and Technology. They do stuff like developing atomic clocks, measuring the kilogram, and confusing Europeans with their size labels. No, I made the last one up, but this really happened. So now they're developing two random numbers with the help of quantum physics. Indeed, they have a website where you can look up the most recent random number. How cool is that? They say that the big advantage of their quantum method is that it's device independent. By this, they mean that there are no details from the devices in the random sequence, no way that you can look for hidden regularities. And they say that they do this with the help of unpredictable non-local quantum correlations. That sounds very technical. But leaving aside all the jargon, you might wonder, but how do they know that the quantum process is unpredictable? How could you possibly rule out that there wasn't a way to predict it that you just didn't know about? Yes, you're raising a very good point. The answer is they can't know it's unpredictable. Their claim is just wrong. The reason I'm telling you about this is that it's a depressingly common theme which you find in quantum tech. These people do experiments and collect data and have no idea what that data means or what to look for. They get the entire basics of quantum physics wrong. And this stuff goes through peer review. You. This is why I'm totally paranoid that if there's anything new to find in this data, we never know about it because the people who work on it have no idea how to even look for something new in more detail. 
What they're saying is that they can rule out that quantum mechanics is ultimately based on a theory with hidden variables that Einstein was an advocate of. They believe that hidden variables can be ruled out by making sure that the correlations between their supposedly random numbers violate an inequality known as Bell's inequality. This is the most misunderstood inequality ever, and I'm working on a longer video about this. But for today, let me just say that correlations which violate this inequality only rule out hidden variables if you assume device independence, otherwise known as measurement independence. That is, they actually had to assume the device independence that they claim to have shown. It's logical rubbish. This isn't even the first time this group has published nonsense. They claimed already in 2015 that they closed all the major loopholes in Bell type tests, which is impossible and that unfortunately got published too. I have to admit that this pisses me off that this sort of thing continues to happen and makes it through peer review, even though it's just logically wrong. They're making impossible claims. No, you can't prove that these numbers are truly random. No, no one's ever ruled out hidden variables. And to top things off, the press release once again mistakenly claims that Einstein's spooky action referred to entanglement which of course it did not. I think what's going on is that people get a kick out of claiming that Einstein was wrong about quantum physics. It makes them feel important somehow. Look, we figured out this thing that even Einstein got wrong. This seems to have put me on a mission to defend Einstein's legacy. He wasn't as stupid as they say he was, but I quite possibly am. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.